All right, so for this experiment, we're going to start with my Ops 46 account. And we're going to talk about scrapping the ISS jellyfish for profit. You may have heard other content creators talk about this, but it's a bit of a detailed process in terms of doing the math and figuring all out where it's possible, what the sweet spots and stuff are. And I definitely recommend using Spox Club to try and figure this one out. We are also going to need stfc.space as well with our ISS jellyfish. So as you can see down here at the bottom, the ISS jellyfish is scrappable starting at ops 43, which is weird because you get it at 39. So the fact that they let you scrap it already so early is kind of weird. It has 12 levels to it. You can take it all the way up to level 60 here. Don't jump ahead, epidermics. <laughs> and when you do scrap it, you get a lot of four-star materials back, plus a little bit of five-star common parts as well. Common parts always go a long way in, in the G5 economy, so whether you have them, you're able to get them now or wait till later, <clears throat> no way, nothing to, you know, no reason not to do it if you can and if you can afford it. And you do get quite a considerable amount of resources back. But if we look at the ISS jellyfish to begin with, if you wanted to take it all the way up to tier 12, without adding any research bonuses whatsoever, you can see it costs an incredible amount of resources to do. And let's actually split screen these. Nope, that wasn't right. There we go. So now we can look at, so this is what we're scrapping it for, and this is what our build costs are without any research or modifications being applied. It's not the easiest to see. Let's see if we can't make this a little bigger. So there we go. So that lines up a little better. That way it's not all running over onto a second column. So you're spending... 675,000 on common parts, you're getting 164,000 back. Not a good ratio at all. But we're going to add a lot of research in. Some of it, a lot of it common research, some of it you don't even have to pay for. And yes, there are primes that do make it cheaper, but are not entirely required. Again, depending on your ops level and stuff here. So let's start with my ops 46 account. And let's just go through the researches that I have on this account already. Because this is where a lot of the player base would be that they would even start thinking about this as a possibility. And we'll see what we can get into there. So we're going to look at my research values first for some of the more basic stuff. Again, this is my free-to-play account. One research queue, zero purchases. Any primes and anything I've acquired have all been done through in-game actions. All right, so what do we got? Pure dilithium, pure tritanium. Those should be maxed. Nope, I didn't finish up pure dilithium yet. Whoops, okay. Well, that's currently only eight. That should be maxed. That's a fault on my part. Now I have something I know to go back and circle back to. We're skipping over the primes. These are the ones that, the multi-tiered primes that use the dolomite. We're going to come back to those later. And let's get into some of our four-star stuff. Now, obviously, different players are going to have different researches completed. Uh, they will have made further progress in some of these trees than I have, especially if you have multiple research queues available to you. Pure tritanium, pure dilithium. I've only gotten those up to level two. Uh, these are G5. Prime uh, researches. We'll come back to those later. And that's it for the station tree. I do love the layout of this because it does tell you not only what tree it's in, but also what slot it's in, so you know how far you have to go to figure some of this stuff out. Uh, we've got Explorer Bartering. So this one for me is actually currently low because I haven't built a lot of Explorers, but that's fairly quick uh, to upgrade there. And we'll 
we'll do that probably before we would even consider starting anything like that. Ship component efficiency. That requires shipyard. Okay, so this can go up to level 8 here. Going higher than that is ops capped. I need shipyard 47 to go further than that. That's also something else you're going to run into in terms of some of this other stuff. Uh, maybe ops level caps. So it's not even like you can just do all the research you want. You are going to run into some ops level restrictions. You may also run into some resource restrictions where you just can't afford to do some of the upgrades because they may take uh, rare materials or specialty materials that you just don't have enough of yet. And tritanium upgrades here. I've only gotten that to level 2. I actually haven't even gotten to dilithium upgrades yet. So that's, again, something in the outlaw tree that I do need to do a little work on here. All right. We move to our territory. Efficient ship upgrades. That one I've got all the way up to level 10. That one is also now ops locked. I have to get to 48 before I can move that up any higher. Optimized ship upgrades is also up to level 8. And you can see, obviously, some researches are worth more than others. Uh, the newer ones that they've added tend to be worth a lot more than the older ones, but the older ones uh, do still have some value to them. I mean, anything you can do to lower a cost a little bit is pretty significant. But if you look here, like let's look at Explorer Bartering, right? I've only got that to level 3. If I wanted to take that up another couple of levels, I'm going from 9% to 25%, 14% increase for going up seven levels of explorer bartering. But if I could do, say, where's another parts one? Component duplicator in the starbase tree. Well, just taking that up to first level gets me 10%. So I'm gaining, this, these are newer researches that I'm actually gaining more value of. The older ones do help, every little bit counts in making this cheaper. But if you're lacking and you're concerning yourself about where to spend these resources, doing it in newer research trees is probably better than spending those resources in older ones. All right. That's it for territory, just those two. Let's go to the galaxy tree. Pure Parts Explorer, this one's maxed. Your ore, maxed. Gas is maxed. Awesome. Okay. Let's go to my star base tree. Component duplicator. This one has a restriction based on your alliance star base. So this is also going to hinder things a little bit. Depending on the size of your alliance and what you can get that to. Base. Fortunately, my alliance is decent enough that I was able to get this to level 3 which is a 30% reduction compared to some of these, like again, where it was only a small 2 or 3% per level. This one is much bigger. And in our X Borg tree, we have a component boost. Maxed that out. There's also a G4 parts prime. We're not going to worry about that right now. And then we've got some artifacts as well. One of them is rare, one of them is epic. Let's go look at those and see what we got. All right, so Spock's engagement pendant. Ooh, lucky, lucky day. Uh, it's currently level two, but I actually just got enough shards from running formation armadas this morning that we can upgrade that to level three. So let's do that one real quick. We're going to take Spock's engagement pendant here to level 3. That was a nice extra 30% reduction in terms of my tritanium and dilithium costs. Uh, the Katinga scale replica is an epic. I don't think I'm anywhere even close on that one on either of my accounts. I'm about halfway. Okay, yeah, that one's going to take a little while to get to. But 
if you do have the ability to unlock it, you can see level 1 is a 50% reduction. So it's a pretty solid one if you can get it, but it is also not the easiest thing to get naturally through the game, and it's probably something they'd prefer you just spent money on. We also have Scotty's Trident Scanner, which I think is also an epic. Yes, that is also an epic. And I have nowhere near the necessary shards for that one. And then we have our Mess Hall and our Borg Favors. Mess Hall is going to be dependent on your officer levels. My crew level is currently 3,200, so I can get to level 62 of this. And lastly, we have one of our new ex-Borg favors that was just added in our faction store. This one is fairly recent addition to the game as well. Explorer assembly line. Come on, where are you? Explorer assembly line, mine is level 2. So give me a 50% reduction there. And the first three levels of this cost the uncommon materials before it switches over to rare materials, I believe, for levels 4 and level 5, I think. Right. Do I have it at level 2, or do I'm trying to get it to level 2? trying to get it to level two so I only have level one okay it didn't sound right when I started looking at it over there what's up Olympus what's up Patrick yep Voltron there you go there's the export favor we just hit on as well so this is just putting in the basic research and things like that for my ops 46 account you can see now I've got quite a bit of bonuses now added, lowering the cost of stuff because of Spox Club. You can see what some of those actual percentages are, and then you can start talking about ways to improve. When we're looking at our actual build costs, we've lowered them significantly from what the base, the original costs were to what the actual costs are now. Uh, just by doing some of that basic research, you can see common Explorer parts basically cut in half. Uh, Uncommon Explorer parts, also cut in half, went from 675 all the way down to 315. But we're still not far enough yet. We'd still be spending 315 and only getting 155 back. So now is where it comes into those multi-level primes. And these are the ones that cost Dolomite in order to unlock and do. Sorry, my stepdaughter just started vacuuming. My wife went to go yell at her to that she's interrupting my stream, but she's okay. All right, so let's go look at our multi-level primes. Now, these again, like I said, in the station tree, uh, they have been for sale. You can buy the dolomite, and you can buy the multiple levels of these things and drank them up, but you can also now source the dolomite in-game, which is how a lot of players have started to unlock these or at least tier them up. Um, the dolomite does come from the Section 31 faction store now. It's a slow drip. It's only 10 per day. It costs you 700 credits. Didn't claim mine today because I have to do some waves on this account to build that uh, currency up. You can also get some of it through your field training as well uh, from Voyager. Defeating Delta Quadrant high, uh, hostiles here will get you 400 for your trouble. Then most players get stuck here on trading in commerce insignias because you have to trade in 100,000 of them. I know a lot of players are stuck here on this one. This is another 400. And if you manage to get through that one, well, this one's just mining materials in the Delta Quadrant to get the last 400.
but through what I've been able to source in game, I believe I have these both at level two, it just should. Yeah, so they're currently both at level two. And as we, I do want to take a quick screenshot of this. So we can kind of just put them again side by side to see just how much prime efficient ship engineering taking this to level two, ship parts engineering level two. Again, these are small reductions, but they do lower the costs a pretty decent amount. <clears throat> if we pull these back over here, we went from 315,000 parts down to 288. So I just saved myself uh, 30,000 parts almost by just getting those basic ones up a little bit. Still not as far as I need to go. There's still more things I would need to do in terms of both parts and uh, uncommon materials to get those numbers down enough. And at Ops 46, where I am, I would have to spend money potentially to get these primes up uh, in order to get that stuff unlocked or possibly get, you know, some of this Katinga pendant. If my alliance was stronger, my component boost was better. Uh, sorry component duplicator. This might also lower the parts another little bit for me. If my ops level was higher, I could get some of these more efficient upgrades done. So there's little things in here that I could do, but there's also this other research here, which is where most people hold off doing this, because you, as you can see, it's not profitable in your 40s. But when you get into your 50s, you get access to a bunch of different material uh, researches and for this one I need to go back to my main account otherwise it won't let me see the tree some recent additions we've had when they did the expansion to these research trees all the way out here in the station tree they added all this new G5 stuff including these researches out here component efficiency flight materials for material costs and ship part costs right here <clears throat> you can't get these until ops 54 I believe but when you do, you can immediately take them up through the first four levels. And when you get to Ops 57, you can take them up three more levels. So when you're a higher level player in your 50s, the need for having the Prime goes down quite a bit. Because these are, again, newer researches, bigger values. Even just getting the first level is a 50% reduction. If we plug in the first level of each of these, we've just dropped our cost significantly from where we were just a second ago. We were here spending 473, now we're down to 372. I just dropped 100,000 between a little bit of the basic primes that I've sourced in game, plus these G5 researches, but you can actually take them up even higher. These can all go up to tier four and now we're getting even closer 470 we're now we're all the way down to 328 in terms of spending that gas yes this does get better again if you have multiple levels of the other parts primes but we're not done yet Because at a higher level account, I would probably have these researches also up higher. You can work on those and take those down even more. There's also some stuff in here that you could take down. Like I could finish off the outlaw one and get additional percentages. So you can play around with some of this stuff. Maybe my star base is higher and I can get another level there. Might have a higher level of the X-Borg favor. Uh, so this is why I love this website. 
because of the ability to play around with these and see how much how much is one research going to change your cost. But the short answer is is that you do need significant values in these. Now, <clears throat> the old rule of thumb used to be you had to take these particular primes. Excuse me. Is take these particular primes up to tier seven of each of them before you finally hit your break even point. And as you can see here, you take it to tier seven. You're talking about I'm getting 155,000 gas, but I'm only spending 146,000 to scrap it. This is what the goal always was. Um, in terms of rare gas, the rare doesn't quite. Oh, well, actually, it does. Uh, now you're down to you're getting 31,000 back. You're spending 30,000 to do it. So you're getting enough materials to build the next one, getting back your full investment, and all you're really using up is the blueprints. You're gaining, you know, I'm getting 59 billion tritanium, but I'm only spending 22 billion tritanium. That's a nice little 40 billion profit on it. Same thing with all the other ones with parts and stuff too. So this is why people talk about trying to do this as a process. Um, and it's probably uh, one of the reasons why, or things like this rather, are one of the reasons why we saw a, a decrease in the officer auction events in terms of G3 and G4 materials and what they count, what they count for was to try to negate strategies like this because players would do things like this where you would just spend the materials level the ship up scrap it get all the materials back and just you could just build another one next month um and kind of do the same thing over now the jellyfish is a little harder to source blueprints for but this is also possible with other ships uh, i know offhand if we go look at the voclis for example Nope, the H is there first. Well, it reset all my researches because I'm not logged in. But even hypothetically speaking, the Voclis is another one that was possible. What do these go up to? 30, 45? 45. Was another ship that it was possible to even with just a handful of researches. I'll just throw those on there just for some numbers real quick. You can get to the point where you're spending 500 on common gas, but you're getting you know, about the same back. Now, obviously, again, I could plug in the rest of the numbers, and you would see that it actually becomes profitable. There's other ships that you can do this with, too, I'm sure, out there. These are the two most common ones that people talk about a lot. Feel free to if you guys know anyone else about it. So um, do you have to max it? You have to do the ship XP before you scrap it to get the value out of it. You got to level it up. Uh, whether you're spending Latinum on the ship XP or parking it overnight in augment space or something where you're getting attacked or just spending a little time farming and grinding for, uh, you know, Eclipse Hostiles or whatever you have to go kill to get the ship XP or augments to get the ship XP up all the way. But in terms of the actual leveling up of the particular primes, no, you don't have to max these out because these do get expensive. Um, I believe if you were to try and max these out, I think it's 700 for the first one and 600 for the second one to have enough dolomite to do it. Uh, and that's, you know, it's a $1,300 investment. Now, again, there are other ways to source the dolomite now, so that cost has probably come down a little bit. Uh, if you can, again, if you can get any of it through Voyager, that'll save you a little bit here and there. Um, and also, as we demonstrated, some of these new G5 abilities and some of the new stuff down here, getting your, your artifacts up, getting your uh, mess hall level up, getting the X boring favors, which only apply to G4 and G5 ships, which is why it's not shown here for, for the Voclis. Leveling those up can also reduce your costs, both in terms of material cost and monetary cost. 
because if you level those things up that you can source in-game, you don't need to spend money on the Prime in order to still find your break-even points. Morning Fable, what is max level of, of what, GP? You gave me... I was talking about a lot of stuff, so... Oh, I covered it? Okay. <laughs> Leveling up a jellyfish? You gotta take it, yes, it's 60. It's a, it's a 12-tier ship. You got, you'd have to take it all the way up to level 60. Now, again, as we were talking about earlier, too, with the jellyfish there... Uh, it's a rare... It's a G4 rare. So... There are significant costs in upgrading it in terms of rare materials. But the rare materials don't kick in until tier 9. When you're going from 9 to 10 is when you start using rare parts and rare materials. So even if you have some of your research is done and you come back and look at your chart here like we were looking at earlier, you can see that your common and uncommons might get to the point where it's close enough to break even but your rare materials aren't there yet. At the very least, if you can work your way through one and get it all the way done, when you scrap that one, you can at least rebuild the second one up through Tier 8 into Tier 9 um, with the materials you got back. And hopefully, during that interim time, you've been able to find other ways to source additional researches, or maybe you've leveled up a little bit, so now you can uh, hit the next level or next tier of something. Maybe you've claimed your daily drip of 10 dolomite a day, so now you can you know, come in here and get the next level of that, get yourself another little you know, price reduction there. Uh, these things do scale up pretty significantly. Level 7, again, would be the sweet spot, this 340% reduction. If you're in your 40s, definitely. If you're in your 50s, not as necessary because, again, these, you know, flight materials right here, well, that's an 80% reduction at level 4. And if you move up at, at Ops 54, you can get that far. So if you save 80% here, well, then you can save 80% over here, which, okay, now you don't need to take it. You only need to take it to Tier 6. If you have that other research giving you the extra 80%, you get the 320, which is, you know, pretty close to the 340 for parts and the same thing down here with you know dilithium and trilithium and other components as well this one scales a little bit slower tier 7 on this is 450 this is a big jump uh, it's 150 percent there but if you were to say get flight materials up again to level 4 that's an 80 percent reduction that may also help with the costs there. So hopefully that helps explain at least the thought process behind all this. If you guys are watching this later on YouTube, uh, thanks for watching. Leave comments down below. I'll try and respond to them, whatever. I get to it, hopefully within a day or two usually. Um, and thank you everybody watching on Twitch Live who... Uh, participated in the discussion. The rare parts can be a little tough to get. You can certainly scrap G3 ships to help accelerate your, your rare acquisition. You know, level up those Saladins and those Legionaries and things like that, or, well, in this case, Explorers. So you'd be leveling up uh, Centurions and... Uh, what's the 26 Explorer? Mayflowers. Hey, <laughs> Mayflowers. Um... You can level up those and scrap them to try and get yourself some G4 materials. If we go into our G3. You can, don't do the hijacked ones. They don't count for anything. Um, you can't scrap those. But your Centurion right here. This is the 28 ship. If you're scrapping these, which you can do at 42... You get a little bit of rare materials here. No rare ship parts, but you do get a little bit of rare materials there that'll help with that. 
if you want the rare ship parts, I think you have to go to the 32s, which is the Burrell, which you can scrap starting at 46, which again is kind of where I drew the line here. Nope, still no rare parts off of that, huh? Well, that stinks. So the rare parts, I guess, are going to be the, the linchpin for a number of players. Does even scrapping an Enterprise get you rare parts? I'm going to guess no. Yeah, no rare parts. So there's no rare ship parts. Scrappable. You can get rare materials, but not rare ship parts. So that's probably going to be where your bottleneck is, which may be why it would be more beneficial um, to focus, if you are putting your dolomite into stuff, to putting it into the ship parts one first and not so much the material one um, because the parts tend to be the bottleneck for a lot of players. Uh, we get more and more materials through battle passes, through scrapping, through ticket events, through daily cl uh, chest claims, th you know, uh, solo armadas, all these other things that give you crystal gas and ore but the ship parts themselves there's only one refinery for that or maybe you have a chance of getting lucky with some pulls maybe you've gotten the skin for the fecia which is not sourceable free to play maybe you've got some other stuff like some of these uh, artifacts you've gotten lucky on or whatnot but So, so that's all I got to say about that. Thank you. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this at least gets you thinking about where you should be prioritizing uh, and what some of the other possibilities are for ways to source materials, to score in events, and to compete in some of these leaderboard events without constantly feeling like you have to open your wallet to do it. So...